Well, congratulations. How are you feeling? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, shoot. Thank you. I'm doing feeling well. Let's get back on this fence. So the fence was very hard to do. I'm joking. I've I seen people get mad because we were talking about the fence. So I said, let me just start off with the fence. People were mad. <laughs> ah, you know, I, was, I went down the little rabbit it. hole. But yeah. Well, I was going to ask if you've talked to your wife yet. Did she stay up? No, not yet. We've been in the back doing everything. She stayed up. And I, I, correction, she's in Paris. So yeah, but um, yeah, she stayed up and, and watched it. It's like four or five o'clock over there. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you think of the performance? Um... I feel good about it, you know. Um, stood up and strike with him. He gave me the takedowns, you know. So I took him, and hopefully it was a well-rounded fight. I have to go back and look. Uh, my coach has told me I was connecting with certain things. I didn't really feel it uh, myself because, you know, you're in the moment. You're touching, but you're not really knowing what touch because he's, I mean, he got, if I rocked him, he has a great poker face because I hit him a couple of times. I looked at him like, you're not going to fall, but he's Samoan, so I give, you know, all respect to him. He's a, I'm an Islander, he's an Islander, so I know he hit me a couple of times, too. He probably said the same thing, like, damn. But we're both Islanders, so we got hard heads, coconut heads. Was, did the fight go the way that you had expected it to go? Uh, yes, from, I mean, from what I bring to the table and what he brings to the table, I expected, you know, um, stand-up strike. I expected, you know, some big swings, you know, and just duck under and, and take him down. There's no sense to stand up there and strike with somebody like that, you know. You see him knock people out. You see him just maul through people. If you stand up there and just try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, I'm not, <clears throat> life for better words, I'm not in a pissing match to see who can just bang, you know, knock each other out. So I'm trying to put on an MMA fight and a well-rounded fight and dominate. What about him surprised you? Um... He was what I expected, so nothing is right. He hit hard. I was like, a couple times he hit me, I'm like, oh, here we go. So everything we prepared for, we saw. And he's, I mean, a great fighter, heavy hands, you know. And we, uh, so I, I, expect, I expected the fight that I got. You know, my hands are hurting. I hit him. He didn't drop. And I was trying. I was like, okay, at least I could try to get my first knockout. Nope. Like I said, we got coconut heads, so. It was what it was, but he was what I expected, and I respect him, and I, I knew what I was getting into. When would you like to get back in there? Man, whenever they, whenever they call me, ice up, go see the family, and, you know, start back training, and, you know, I'm always ready. And they call me a couple of weeks from now, hey, let's do it. So you had a, an interesting call out for a cookout, and, um, you know, I think Kenny and I want to be judges. Sure, let's do it, you know. I talked to Stipe a while ago, and he was telling me about the firehouse. I, have a, I had a neighbor. We ended up moving neighborhoods, but I had a neighbor. He was a firefighter, and he um, got injured on the job, you know, cleaning the fire truck. And, you know, Stipe is a firefighter, and also he was talking in the, um, at the PI. He was talking about learning how to barbecue and how all the guys at his firehouse barbecues and different stuff. So I was like, you know what? It'll be good, a good charity, you know, for his cause. And he was talking about anybody want a barbecue. We could do it. Any, anybody in the UFC that want. I don't call people out for fights and stuff like that. But barbecuing, I, barbecuing on a fence building, I'm calling you out. So anybody want to challenge me in the barbecue, I see Volk, Volk out there cooking steaks. I don't, I don't like how you cooking, But, you know, anybody want a barbecue, we'll do a challenge out here for um, International Fight Week or something. Set up a grill and have the people decide. So... I'm just here, you know, fight and have fun and, and cook. So you know, we got two judges. We just need two more. Yeah, I like it. Thank you. Are you a rub guy yes, or sir. a sauce guy? Um, I was a sauce guy when I was young and, you know, immature, you know, but now that I'm, I'm grown and, and sophisticated, I'm more of a, you know, a rub guy. <laughs> Do you have a fir uh, favorite like type of meat or whatever that you use to try to barbecue? Uh, my go-to's I do like um, pork belly bites. Oh. Then I do my ribs. Um, for my cookouts, I, you know, for people, I do the leg quarters, cook some steaks. So, yeah, what? I haven't done, um, I, I haven't had the time to do brisket. Um, I got to get my drinking to cooking ratio down set because I, I'm right now, I'm only on the barbecue, on the, on the ribs portion of the, the, the leveling it out. So, if I start doing brisket, I, I don't know how it's going to turn out, you know, with a 12 pack or a 24 pack. So, yeah, because that's an, that could be an expensive, expensive mistake. Yeah. Mess up some brisket or something. Yeah. So, I got to figure out the timing, you know, sip, sip every hour or so. You know, I'm on the six, six hour um, cooks. 
so I can pace myself for those. I love it. Obviously, you talked about you didn't want to stand up there, and, you know, and just make yourself a target for those big shots. You know, you did a lot of getting them on the ground. Once you did get him to the ground, did you feel like he was struggling? Did you know once you got it to the ground that he was going to have a hard time getting back up? Yes, sir. Um, once we got him down, um, I'm not going to really say too deep into details, but there were certain things I said and certain, like, exchanges that we had on the ground, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, and I just, I, you know, I got to work on it. It's hard to kind of work grinding. Well, for me, I'm, like I said, I'm still new, so I'm still working ground and pound different angles and certain things. But when I got him down, I was like, okay, if I stick to I, – I'm work, I worked on my routes this um, fight camp, so – I knew like to transition. He tried to roll me a couple of times. I was okay, settle back down. And my coaches, Coach Danny, was yelling out, you know, settle back, switch, and different things. I even went for the um, head and arm choke, but just the ground and pound. That's something I got to work on because when I got him down, I heard him say certain things, and you know, we had little exchanges, you know, as friends. And um, yeah, I just should have capitalized a little more, yeah. <laughs> But now, now you're teasing us. You know, you're saying you guys are talking a little bit. I mean, was it was it just a playful like bantering background, or was he just talking about the game plan, or like what sort of words were you guys talking about? I think um, he threw the lead kick, and when he landed, he's like, "Shit, I shouldn't have did that." And I was like, mm. <laughs> "I think that's what he said." He said something like that. Sorry for the language, uh, but he said so when he once I got the lead kick, uh, when he when he threw the high kick, and he was like, "Yeah." So it's a little stuff like that. Like I said, he was a great, great um, sportsman. Um, it was a great challenge, and I, I thank him for that. But, yeah, we, we had some little exchanges in there. <laughs> That's awesome. And obviously it was a unanimous decision, but when, when it got to the end, at the end, you are pretty confident that you did enough to get the, your arm raised. Oh, yes, sir. If it goes, like I, um, in a pre-fight, we talked. I'm here for 15 minutes. I, I know I don't get paid by the minute, but if I'm scheduled for 15 I'm going to work for 15. I, I'll try to get you out there, but if I don't get you out, hey, it's, it's 15 minutes of torture for you, you know. Um, like I said, with my the training partners that I have, Jamal, Isaiah, Zach, um, Sergey, we grind at extreme, you know. And even um, Strickland getting ready for his fight and Chris Curtis, we've been at the PI. We, we grind for 80 minutes straight of just grappling, you know. So... Striking, we get in there on, on Tuesday, Thursdays, and we throw hands. So I know it's going to be a, a long night for, for my opponents. So if you don't get me out of there quick, it's, we're going to just have fun. <laughs> we're going to hang out for 15 minutes, and it's going to be torture. Who's one of your hardest trading partner, uh, partners at, from ex, you know, Extreme that maybe people wouldn't know about or that people wouldn't think would be one of your toughest partners to go against? Ooh. Even when you're just talking about sparring or something. You know, you mentioned Chris Curtis. Obviously, he's got power. Obviously, he's got hands. You mentioned, you know, Strickland. He's got cardio for days. You know, a lot of people might be surprised if those were one of the guys that you would put up there as maybe one of the, the hardest to go against. But who's maybe some of that you go against that maybe people wouldn't think about? Ooh, we got so many killers in the room. Um, Alex, Alex, um, po coach, how do you say Alex's last name? Sorry. Polizzi, Alex Polizzi, if it comes to grappling, man, he's just on you. Um, Coach Jason, who was um, with um, Edmund, those guys, they get on your back and you're just like, oh, my goodness. They're just dry. And not, I'm a heavyweight. Polizzi is a 205er. And Coach is Coach. And he's supposed to be old, but, geez, I'm ready. He gets on your back and you're like, get this guy off me. So we have guys like that. And that's, always with, that's how you know you're in a good gym when you're um, – when you got guys that just not fighters, Alex is a fighter, but coach is coach. You know he's he's coach, and they'll get on your back and just drown you, and you're like, dang. So you can go with all the fighters, you know, like your Sean's, your Alex, um, Saudi, and Sergey, and certain things. But we have guys that aren't fighting anymore or fight on the local scene that will drown you. So you you're getting if you're striking, you got five rounds of just torture. Or if we're grappling, especially our 80-minute goals, you're just drowning. So that's, that's the type of um, people we have. And a lot of people say that, you know, the, the training is the hard part. This is the fun stuff. Oh, yeah. This was I, – I, and not, it's not a um, slight on my opponent, but – and even for myself, it felt so slow. The fight felt slow compared to practice, but I also go with smaller guys as far, like I said, like the Alex or the coach where they're, they're smaller, they're moving more. So when you go with the heavyweights, you're, you're, it's a different tempo. So now you're, you're like, 
damn, okay. <laughs> Compared to like those guys, like pop up, they're in and out, they're moving. And now you have to move um, Chidi. I don't know if you, Chidi, he has a fight coming up. I had to go and work with him. And some of the guys at the PI, um, they was like, why don't you move like that all the time? I was like, well, Chidi moves a lot faster. So now I have to keep up with his tempo to, to keep, to help him out. You know, I can't just do a heavyweight stuff. So now you have to move. So coming in today, it was like, oh shoot. And you know, I had to lay off. So coming back in first fight back, I was like, oh shoot, this feels a lot slower, but it is heavyweight and he hit hard. So it's nothing, nothing bad, you know, just a different weight class, different um, looks. Yes, sir. Well, performance uh, definitely showed the work. So congrats on the victory. Thank you. Thank you.